Howdy friends, welcome back to another installment of Restoration on the Old Fishing Boat. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Today uh, we've got a few things we're going to be working on. I'm also going to share with a couple things I didn't show you last week that I worked on. But right now we're at my local Discount Marine and family owned and operated. They're a little more expensive and we're here to pick up a couple supplies for today's project. So let's go. All right, so we made it out of the local marine, $100 poor. <laughs> Let's head back to the RV, get a few things together on a project for today. In the meantime, check out these couple few clips of things that I took care of last week that you didn't get a chance to see. So it's a bit of a blustery day here in Central Florida and stuff. We're getting ready for a tropical storm to be whipping through here about Tuesday and everything. So there's rain in the area. I'm getting sprinkled on them right now. Let me show you what project and one of the most important things about this old fishing boat we're working on today. Now you guys heard me say that the hardest, most difficult and tedious part about this boat build, hands down, is going to be doing the framework with the decking. So we still have that work to do. We have things that we need to take care of in the meantime to keep this ball rolling. Now, if you were able to catch the first episode of this old boat restoration, you remember, I bought this boat, got a great deal on it, came with everything, including an outboard motor, which was a brand new Coleman 2.6 four-stroke motor. Well, I ended up deciding that's not gonna make it or cut it when it comes to this boat, so I sold it to a neighbor of mine for 300 bucks. Now, the going rate when it comes to selling an outboard motor is usually it's $100 per horsepower. So a 2.6 motor that I sold him and I got $300, but it was in brand new shape, so he paid me a little bit of extra money. So the whole plan in place when I started on this old boat restoration and stuff was to wait until premium season was kind of over to look for an outboard motor and stuff like that and research and find out what would be the best quality, the best horsepower, the best fit for this boat and everything. Well, I decided to jump the gun. I drove to Cape Canaveral 30 miles north from here yesterday and I found what I believe is going to be the perfect fit for this boat. So before we uncover this, because right now it is sprinkling rain, I'm gonna wait till we get a break in here. This is the new outboard motor. And let me tell you something, I might hear it in the comments about the choice I made with this motor, but once I explain to you the reason why I got this motor, it's gonna make complete sense. Let's move on to something else that needs to take place when putting this whole system together. As you saw in the beginning of the video, I was up at my local discount marine and stuff like that because I was looking for stuff to set up for a fuel system and everything. Before I even went in there, I had to make some measurements on my boat to find out what was gonna work for the size we were working with. 
This is what we came up with. I picked up a six gallon flat boy at the marina. Now if you take a look, I did my measurements. It's the only place in town or anywhere I could find this size of fuselage for that I was looking for. And it fits almost perfectly in here. I've got some styrofoam and some framing I'm gonna put around here so that way it doesn't move around. But it's about as big of a tank that you're gonna put in an area like this that's gonna fit this size. Let me show you a little closer the selling features and what else I have to do with this and why I purchased this tank. Not to mention the reason why this fits so well. Another one of the biggest selling features this has is it's getting very, very difficult these days to locate these kind of fuselages for these outboard systems that have vented caps. This came with a vented cap. It cost me more. This is almost the top of the line that you can buy for this kind of application and everything. I don't know the reason behind it, but you can buy these that don't come with a vented cap. They're about $20 less. Let me tell you and explain the reason and the importance of having a vented cap on your fuselage. All right, so let's take this old gas can off a friend of mine's boat. Um, he wanted to give it to me, but I wasn't interested. This does not have a vented cap. It's just a regular cap. Now, here's the problem behind that. If you set something like this in into a compartment, say underneath a seat or something on your boat, and it doesn't have a vent, this thing here will end up swelling under pressure. And after a while, it could swell enough to break that seat and it will expand and it'll push anything out of its way to expand to a point it becomes very dangerous uh flammable fuel uh fumes and all that other stuff so this is a no-go not to mention it's way oversized all that other good stuff and it just does not conform to what i'm working on i'm putting this boat together all right so let's get back to my new tank and stuff like that what you see with this tank came with it except it only came with this connector here it did not come with this little brass fitting the size this was sold was a male threaded brass male thread at quarter inch that goes into the outtake of your tank and it went into a 3 8 barb and I had to buy that part. Now let's we'll talk about our fuel line with our primer ball. That is something that is expensive but I got with the motor and I'll show it to you. Now the next vital important piece of this puzzle when it comes to setting up your fuel system on your fishing boat is you have to find out what's going to work for you for a fuel hose with a primer ball and get the correct fitting that's going to fit and match your outboard motor. These are not a plug and play by any means. The size and diameter, your fitting connection that goes into your outboard, all that other good stuff. I had to research and do all this stuff. But luckily the guy that I bought this motor off of, he gave me this part right here with the right fitting and all that stuff. That right there by itself is an $80 value. Okay, back to the boat motor that we bought and stuff yesterday. We'll get to that in a few minutes, but I want to take a minute and I want to explain to you where my mentality, my thinking, my planning, all that stuff went into purchasing this particular motor. Let me digress. So you hear me keep saying this is a 16 foot deep V aluminum fishing boat. The guy a couple doors down from me just bought a GNU that's made out of fiberglass. The difference between the two is the weight. His boat is twice as heavy, and he's had to equip it with a 25 horsepower outboard motor just so he can move down the river at about 25 knots. I opted to get something much lower in horsepower because this is a much lighter weight boat. Okay, so we've had to step inside the RV for a little bit because the rain's really picked up. It's tropical season, so it's a hit and miss. I'm gonna tell you what I got, but we're not gonna show you exactly today unless the rain stops. I picked up a beautiful Mercury outboard motor, and it's a two-stroke. Now, let me explain to you the difference, those of you who don't know, between a two-stroke or a four-stroke motor. A two-stroke or two-cycle motor requires you to mix your oil with your gas. Now, you have to have the components that are gonna work for an outboard motor. It's not the same kind of stuff you're gonna put in your fuel tank of your lawnmower or uh, a generator stuff. It's got to be marine grade and everything. A four stroke or four cycle is something where you add gas into the container, then you have a separate oil compartment for that. Two stroke can be a little trickier because you have to have the right mixture and the right stuff. And it's recommended to get the stuff that's rated for your type of motor. So the components that are necessary to maintain your fuel system on a two stroke outboard motor. As I told you, I purchased a Mercury. We will show you that as soon as the weather permits and stuff. My local boathouse discount marine in Melbourne carries from Mercury, from the factory, Premium Plus TCW3 outboard oil meant for two-stroke motors. 
Also, you're going to want to get yourself some sort of an oil mixing bottle. All right. Now, two-stroke motors are required to run at 50 to 1. 50 to 1. That's the ratio. So, let's take a close look at this, and I'll show you how this equates to how much you're going to put in that fuselage that we put on the boat. All right. When you buy one of these oil mixing bottles and stuff, it shows you the difference when it comes to stuff. Remember, we're working 50 to 1 ratio here. And we got a six gallon fuselage. Right here is the six gallon mark, which tells me that I need to fill this mixing bottle up to where it says six gallons, because that's the size fuselage we have. Now you're going to add that amount when you're filling the tank up from empty. So if you're only putting three or four gallons in the thing, you're gonna go down here to how many gallons that were added to the existing, and then fill up that amount and add that in with your fuel. Talking about fuel, let's get to that next. Now boating is by far a cheap sport or hobby. It costs a little bit of extra money. And if you want to maintain and take care of your stuff, especially your motor, which is your powerhouse of your entire boat, make sure that you don't cheap out and get junk fuel. I only put ethanol free fuel inside of any one of my motors, except for my Hummer. I put 93% octane in that, right? Because it's not a marine engine by any means. When it comes to this and protecting my investment and stuff, ethanol free fuel every single time, don't cheat out. They have six gallons in there. Each gallon was $3.69. So it's the right stuff. It costs more, but it's gonna stand up. Now let's take a look at the fuel treatment. Most guys out there say, yep, you need to put Stabil in there. Well, there's a lot of different products that are out there that's just as good. I happen to pick this up also at the Marine. It's made by Biobore EB, and it's ethanol buster, gasoline treatment and stuff. And you look on there, it has a little measuring cup thing on here. And the way this treatment calls for in the direction of the dosage is, is one ounce per 15 gallons. Well, we don't have a 15 gallon tank. So if you split 15 gallons in half, that's seven and a half. So he'd put a full half ounce in there. Well, we're less than that. So with six gallons, I put just under a half an ounce of this fuel treatment in there with my ethanol free fuel, as well as my mercury outboard oil. Okay, so let's review the best practices when it comes to the maintenance of your fuel system with the two stroke outboard motor. Always follow all the mixture and directions and dosages the way you're supposed to, the way that the factory tells you to do so. Make sure never to cheap out and get anything less than ethanol free fuel. Some guys out there are dead set on believing to add a little extra oil to the mixture because they think that it's gonna help protect those parts inside of that outboard and stuff. Well, that requires you to figure that out for yourself and what works for you. I do know if you add a little more oil to that mixture, it's gonna burn a lot richer, it's gonna smoke, and you're gonna have a lot of extra fumes going on and everything and i think it's just more of an overkill but whatever works for you that's what the best practice for you to do so but also now to the fuel system don't ever add too much fuel stabilizer to your mixture the reason why is if you add too much it's going to thin out the octane in that fuel causing you to have performance issues and you're just not going to get the horsepower that your motor is meant to have all right, so Mother Nature and the rain and some thunderstorms moving through have kind of won this round. Hopefully I've covered a lot of the basics on how to put a system like this together. Tomorrow I will unveil that motor. We'll put in a 55 gallon drum with water, see if the thing starts and we'll unveil the horsepower size and other features of this cool little outboard motor that's made by Mercury. I'll see you then. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are gonna unveil this new outboard motor on the old fishing boat and stuff. But we've got the boat parked back here in storage where everyone else that has boats in the park keep it and stuff. That's a pretty popular place where people like coming back here and working on their boats and stuff. So let's get going. All right, let's go ahead and take the cover off our boat and stuff. Remember I told you I got a Mercury, but I didn't tell you what kind of Mercury. Look at that. That's a sweetie. She's a Mercury 8. Now let me tell you a little bit about this motor before we get this thing set up to start. This is a 2004 Mercury 8 two-stroke motor and if you look closely this is a long shaft okay so a lot of these boats you'd put this kind of motor on you need to raise your transom up but I think we're going to be okay where it's at let's open up the cowl and let me show you how nice and clean that baby looks
Look how absolutely clean and immaculate this motor looks. The guy I bought it off of bought it new in 2004. Only used it a couple times. Only booked 15 hours of runtime on this thing and then it sat and he had to rebuild like carburetors and a couple other little things on here. Well, when he sold to me, it started on the first pull and this was a couple days ago. So I'm gonna to try to get my big blue canister full of water back here in the storage area and drop that motor in there and see if this thing will fire up. All right, so it's time of truth to find out if this motor's gonna run or not. We're gonna hook up our fuel line to the motor and stuff and get it all set to go and we're gonna see if this thing starts. <laughs> See that first pull. I cut it off and we're going to try it again and we'll try to gears forward and reverse. Well, there you go. Proof is in the pudding. First pull on this 2004 Mercury 8 horsepower two-stroke. This thing runs very well, and I'm going to keep as good a care as I possibly can. Uh, I think we'll be doing most of our restoration on this boat back here uh, because there's more room, and I don't have the sound of the traffic up front. Wow, what a deal. There you have it. Just like that, everything wrapped up, ready to go. Uh, the motors, everything, the bimini down in a gas tank, everything wrapped up nice and tight to stay weatherproof. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching the video. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. One step closer to getting ready for this baby to be out in the water. We still got the decking to finish out, as well as our battery box with electrical and stuff like that. But hopefully by the end of summer, this thing's going to be ready to go. Have a great 4th of July, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Take care.